Now we'll go over how to run the analysis on the full two-dimensional data set using the manual thresholds that we use in the paper. So to do that, I've already run the cleanup macro, and I'm going to open the full data set in a concatenated form in this file, which is wild type minus DNA time 1 to 40, wild type DNA time 41 to 80. If I open this, this is a set of two channel images, and there are 80 time points, each of which is one of the images. And the first 40 are from the condition without DNA, uh, and the second 40 are with the condition with DNA, as described uh, both in the paper and in the lecture. So we have this. We can now run biop jackup on the uh, entire data set. I'm going to open biop jackup. We are going to assign the channels, use the manual thresholds, the same values that were used in the paper, a manual threshold of 40 for channel A and of 114 for channel B. And all we want is the Manders coefficients. And specifically, we're going to look at the threshold in Manders coefficient of the NLRC3, which is um, the green channel, um, uh, what its co-occurrence is with the sting channel, which is the magenta one. So I'm going to say OK. This will create a table of results. It is logging everything it does, and then it will create one report for each of the 80 images. So now you'll have a lot of images, uh, but really we care about these results. And this thresholded M2 is the value that is the same thing that we measured in the paper, except in the paper we did it on three-dimensional data sets. So here this is on a two-dimensional data set, only a single slice of those 3D stacks to make it more manageable for distribution with these exercises. So I'm going to save this uh, on the desktop. And uh, I'm going to open it. That's just a comma-separated values file, so it can be opened in Excel. And I've created, as part of these exercises, um, if you go here to data analysis empty, this is something where you can copy and paste the results and it'll analyze them uh, equivalent to figure 4G in this uh, Lee and colleagues paper from 2019 on which I was a collaborator. So we can grab the threshold M2 value and we want to do this on the first 40. Those are going to be the, the uh, wild type without DNA. So um, it's going to be these ones. I'm going to copy those and paste them here. And then I'm going to grab the second 40 and paste them here. And so you can see this is the distribution of the Manders coefficients in the absence of DNA. And you can see as you add DNA, the co-occurrence goes down mirroring what we saw in the paper with a subset of the data. Instead of doing it on 3D, we did it on a 2D subset. So um, once you have this, um, you can try the analysis in a different way and just to see how robust it is to changes in the decisions you made. So I'll just show you one example of this, um, which is what if we did it instead of with manual thresholding with an automatic thresholding method, specifically Otsu. So we can do that here. Um, I will uh, run the cleanup um, macro because now there's a lot to clean up. Um, I will go ahead and open the data again. I'll open biop jackup again, but instead of using the manual thresholds, I'll use Otsu for both channels. If I say OK, you can see that, um, let's let this complete. It tells you what threshold method it was using. It tells you the thresholds that it found, which now instead of always being 40 for A and 114 for B, um, vary across images. And then these are the thresholded M2 values. So I'm going to save this as results Otsu. OK. Um, and I'm going to open that. I'm going to go to my uh, data analysis file and just copy um, this worksheet. And so I'm just going to call this analysis Otsu. And I'll delete all of these. So now if I go to the results Otsu, I'll grab for thresholded M2 the first 40. And 
and the second 40, which correspond to the conditions with uh, DNA. And so you can see here that, again, the results don't look exactly the same, but the same trends are there. So um, even though, uh, so in the paper, as I described, we use manual thresholding on the 3D data sets, and we were able to get the same sort of directionality of the result uh, and even statistical significance doing the same kind of thresholding, but only on a subset of the data, two-dimensional, and then doing a completely different thresholding approach, image by image using the Otsu method, again, on the 2D data set. And so these are examples of things that you can do to check whether your, um, your analysis is robust to changes into decisions. As you might recall from the lecture, we did something a little bit fancier after we did the paper, just checking on the 3D data set. Um, whether we, what would happen if we adjusted the thresholds over a pretty wide range, and we saw that the results were very robust. So this is the kind of thing that you can do in different circumstances to check that even if you make different decisions, if the analysis is giving the same result, you can have some confidence that that analysis um, is probably giving you the right answer.